Hi guys, it's Baniel and welcome to this and welcome to another WWE reaction. My nose is killing me. The allergies are killing me. I barely can keep my eyes open. This video was recommended by your ID Jorkafe. Yuri DJ. I I don't know. I, I give up. <laughs> Can you react to how North Korea held the greatest pro wrestling event in history by Kenta Benta? This is the most attended pro wrestling show ever. 190,000 people. Yes, 190,000. Where are all these people fitting? What about like the last row? What can they see? And all of them like wearing binoculars to be able to see anything in the match. All right, I found the video by uh, Kento Bento, so let's go and react to it, shall we? I'm Kento Bento. I'm Kento Bento. <laughs> this video is made possible by Dashlane. Download Dashlane for a free 30-day trial if you never want to forget another password. Why is again, like the music the so the scary? Pyongyang. North like, Korea. hey, yo, download Dashlane, but it's very terrifying. Like, Dashlane now sounds like something really scary happening in front of your house. 1995. The lone American made his way down a long, dingy hallway past several North Korean officials. He was nervous. Afraid of what was like to recent. come, not just because of the constant surveillance he was under, but the state of the entire country. You see, North Korea at that very moment was in the midst of a devastating famine, with hundreds and thousands of its citizens suffering and dying from starvation and illnesses. Oh, he didn't know what to expect, there's a but he was there about for it, a reason, and he had a job to do. At the entrance, he got his cue, and with one final breath, he stepped out into what was a sea of humanity. Now this wasn't just any crowd. This was 190,000 North Koreans who were conditioned to see Americans as evil, who did not know pro wrestling was staged, that it was predetermined and choreographed. And here was a man, a blonde haired American man who embodied everything they were legitimately told to hate. Mm. This man you may have heard of was the legendary Ric Flair, one of the greatest American professional wrestlers of all time. And at this moment, he was wondering what he had gotten himself into. Now, this happened in April 1995, but the events that led to this actually started 11 months earlier. Tokyo, Japan, 1994. Over a thousand kilometers away, a Japanese politician was in his office contemplating his uncertain future. This politician was in the midst of a major scandal involving his alleged connection to the Japanese mafia, the Yakuza, oh. and this seriously threatened his upcoming re-election to the House of Councillors, Japan's equivalent to the US Senate. Now, aside from being a politician, he was also one of the most popular Japanese wrestlers of all time, because this man with the granite chin was the renowned Antonio Inoki. Initially rising to fame as the protege of the great 1950s legend Ricky Dozan, the first real megastar of Japanese pro wrestling, he eventually branched out building a legacy of his own, later parlaying his in-ring success and popularity to the world of politics. However, with his political career now in limbo, he was thinking of leveraging that past to save his future. Now over in the Hermit Kingdom, an incident was taking place, something unthinkable. The great leader, the eternal president, the founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung, had collapsed. He was having a heart attack. A team of North Korea's best doctors were flown in to save him. They worked on him for hours. But alas, on the afternoon of July 8, 1994, Kim Il-sung died. To North Koreans, this was a man who saved Korea, mm. who single-handedly defeated the evil Japanese yeah. to liberate the nation, who fought off and vanquished the imperialist Americans to win the Korean War. And those were some mighty shoes to fill. His son, True. Kim Jong-il, now left suddenly with an entire nation to rule and one under immense turmoil felt this pressure, as all eyes were on him. Meanwhile, in the US, there was one company that was reigning supreme WWE? as the world's premier wrestling brand, the Connecticut-based World WF. Wrestling Federation, or WWF, today known as the WWE. Now, at the time, their biggest competitor was the Georgia-based World Championship Wrestling, or WCW, who was constantly trying to play catch-up. Yeah. This frustrated the WCW president, Eric Bischoff, who wanted nothing more than to beat his rival. One night, Bischoff received a call from an old Japanese acquaintance. It was the wrestler-turned-politician, Antonio Inoki. Inoki had finally figured out how to save his political career, 
and it, perhaps strangely, involved holding the greatest pro wrestling event the world had ever seen. Mm. Inoki himself owned a successful wrestling company in Tokyo called New Japan Pro Wrestling, NJPW, and in a collaborative effort with Bischoff's WCW, wanted to put on a pay-per-view extravaganza with marquee names from both sides of the Pacific. The publicity would be huge. Bischoff listened intently as Inoki revealed the one caveat. The event would be held in North Korea, the totalitarian isolationist state. Now, this in itself would be controversial, but NJPW was a Japanese company, and WCW was an American company, two countries considered the greatest of enemies to North Korea. Despite this, Inoki was willing, hoping the publicity and goodwill gleaned from this so-called world peace event, as he dubbed it, would boost his chances at re-election, as well as help put WCW on the map. Or at least, that was his pitch to Bischoff. Bischoff didn't actually need much convincing though because he saw this as a phenomenal opportunity to gain Controversy mainstream creates attention. cash. Now, oh yeah, then maybe Bishop should have been the one who went there and fought and not sent any other wrestlers to do that instead. Poor Ric Flair though. Of course, all this really amounts to nothing if North Korea didn't actually agree to hold the event. And for such an isolationist country intent on keeping outsiders away, this just wasn't going to happen. Barring, of course, some unprecedented event that would change the course of North Korea which it that did. Event, yeah. The supreme leader had died, and his son Kim Jong-il was now ruler, which meant he needed to make a statement. He needed to showcase his newfound power and influence to the world and to his own people. He needed to prove his worth and establish a cult of personality he felt was vital for political Wakanda control, forever. something he learned from dad. And, odd as it may seem to us, Sorry. a grand pro wrestling event with its simplistic portrayals of good and evil apparently served that purpose. North Korea had always tended towards these types of old-fashioned Stalinist spectacles in showcasing their might. And so, he was on board. Thus the pieces were now in place. Inoki, Bischoff, and Kim were all in. But they needed a main now event to headline each the show. Other. One that would generate a great deal of buzz. <laughs> and it only made sense that Inoki himself be involved given his superstar status, which he agreed to. Being semi-retired from the sport by that point and being an active high-profile politician made it unexpected to some, though not completely unique in the annals of wrestling history as seen by current mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, Kane, who still makes in-ring appearances Kane. to this day. Inoki had always taken a, shall we say, hands-on approach in diplomatic affairs. And controversies aside, his actions have often stemmed from a genuine interest in promoting world peace, to the point of putting himself in some real danger. danger. Yeah, now, that's nice. The question was though, who cool. was he going to face in the main event? His opponent also had to be someone big, and preferably American. And so Eric Bischoff went and asked his biggest star in WCW to join him in Pyongyang. The most famous wrestler of all time, Hulk Hogan, who said no. But who did agree to join Smart. him was the nature boy, Ric Flair, also one of the all-time greats. Crazy Unlike Hogan, man. party boy Flair was always up for an adventure and oh was excited God, to take the insane. risk. And a risk it was, as once inside the Hermit Kingdom, no one would be able to guarantee Yeah, safety. your safety, now, you can end up in point, jail. The powers that be and wanted they would never even more prestige added to the event. So they called upon a name that even non-wrestling fans would have heard of. Astonishingly, Bischoff was able to convince Muhammad Ali no the way Muhammad to join there? them on the ride. Many months later, in Pyongyang, this motley crew of high-profile American and Japanese wrestlers and performers touched down in a special military plane sent by the North Korean government. They were warned in advance How much the plane were they paid would for be this bugged, man? filled with microphones, which meant they had to refrain from saying anything even remotely negative about the country. Of course, Upon they should landing, have gone through training too. Each person had their too. passports taken and was immediately assigned a handler by North Korea's intelligence agency to yep. follow them around 24-7. This meant oh they God. weren't allowed to go anywhere except for on carefully curated tours of the country crafted specifically for them. On these tours, they had to go to monuments and memorials where they were told by their handlers that the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki never happened and that North Korea won World War II. Many times, they had to pay their respects to the great hero. <laughs> like, that's insane that there are still people there who believe that. Like, they only can watch their own programs. They cannot watch any Hollywood movies, anything like that. And if they get caught watching any of that, like, they end up in jail, if not dead. 
It is crazy living there. Oh my god, the amount of lies. Look how media can control people. Look how like just one person in controlling information means having power and controlling it. Like that is crazy. ...of North Korea's past, including, of course, the recently deceased Supreme Leader. All in all, they were simply the best. And if anyone told them otherwise, there would be severe consequences. Imagine One of the wrestlers, be like, Big yes, Scott Norton, yes. found this out the hard way. One night in his hotel room, he was on the phone with his wife, who was in the US. They were arguing, as she was accusing him of partying recklessly, having a blast with the guys over in Asia. Norton tried to explain that she was wrong. That oh that my sort God, of she thing was just so wasn't possible wrong. in North Korea. Yeah. But she didn't believe him. Out of frustration, he yelled, you don't understand what kind of shit we're in, which is when the phone went dead. The door suddenly opened and North Korean military personnel came in and forced him out. They sat him down in an interrogation room and informed him that he can't talk about their country like that. Indeed, they had heard everything. The phone was tapped and the room was bugged. All the hotel rooms were under surveillance. According to his later account, no one fully expected to be shot right then, right there. But as things were looking dire, someone high up in command walked in and after some vague threats and a stern warning, he was let go. Who's that? Perhaps it was because they knew a high profile diplomatic incident would likely be more detrimental to North Korea. Yeah. Or they just didn't want to ruin the big event the next day, as Scott Norton was a featured attraction. Either way, come event time, Norton Flair, all the wrestlers were ready to put on a show. Now, there was a huge famine going on, and so the wrestlers really had no idea what sort of crowd to expect. Would they even be able to afford tickets? But upon arrival at the stadium, they were shocked to find a packed attendance, yeah. which in itself is impressive. But this was North Korea's May Day Stadium, to this day the largest stadium in the world. Ric Flair no was way. ecstatic that there were real draws even in the Hermit Kingdom, but he was soon informed that what he was witnessing was a forced attendance. Yeah. North Korea wanted to show the world how much they were truly respected, and it was clear that empty arena matches just Everything wouldn't convey is forced that. There. As for their militaristic might, they had tanks and launches displayed on the field as well as lots and lots and lots of marching. In the back, they had rows of children holding up sectioned cards that collectively depicted ballistic missiles oh hitting God. the US and Japan, which, while a magnificent sight to behold, was awkwardly worrisome for um, the American and Japanese wrestlers who were getting ready to perform. What? Now, once they were performing, once the actual wrestling started, things took a strange turn because it became quickly apparent that something wasn't quite right. What, what? The entire stadium of people were silent, eerily silent. Pro wrestling had always been contingent on eliciting crowd reactions and playing off them. So this was a huge detriment to the performance. Now, it turned out that likely no they one in the stadium allowed. actually knew what pro wrestling was. They didn't know any of the famous wrestlers and they didn't know it was meant to be fake. For this conservative crowd, the carnivalesque glitz and glamor, the flamboyance and face paint was just too much. And if anything, they were expecting competition along the lines of amateur wrestling or Greco-Roman, the best fighting the best, true gladiators, the, the elite, not the suspiciously fake stuff. But that wasn't even the biggest problem because the entire show was filled with American and Japanese wrestlers. All the matches were either America versus America, Japan versus Japan, or America versus Japan. So who were they supposed to cheer? Wrestling yeah. meant to have a good guy, bad guy dynamic. Yeah, and they like clearly established for them at the both start bad guys. not to cheer for. The deafening silence continued through Two Cold Scorpio's breakdancing, the Steiner Brothers' theatrics, and even some solid wrestling. There were a few exceptions though that provoked a reaction, like the women's tag match, which was absolutely shocking for the North Korean men, Bull Nakano in particular with the blue haired dominatrix look, and the match of behemoths. Big Scott Norton, fresh from interrogation, battling Shinya Hashimoto. Big heavy set men like these were of course bewildering sights in a country ravaged mm, by famine. Yeah. Exceptions aside though, by and large, there were no reactions. The crowd just didn't care. And as the main event rolled around, things were looking grim. Ric oh no. Flair versus Antonio Inoki. Once again, America versus Japan. Now Flair may have been on edge, but Inoki, well, he wasn't concerned because he had a plan. In fact, he had anticipated the crowd from the very start. And as the architect he of this whole affair, he was banking into... on one very important piece of the puzzle. One that was remarkably over 70 years in the making. Hongwon County, North Korea, 1924, on the uh -oh. East Coast. There was a boy who was the son of a farmer. He grew up poor like many in the region, 
but once older, he was able to make his way to Japan to earn a living. Korea was still under colonial Japanese rule at the time. He first did sumo, but soon gave it up to try his hand at professional wrestling. This is where he found unrivaled success, defeating American after American, emerging as a folk hero to the Japanese people. In the post-war era, the Japanese people were searching for that one symbol of strength, a symbol of Japanese resurgence, and they found it in this man, the man known as Riki Dozan, the first real megastar of Japanese pro wrestling. By this point, he was a naturalized Japanese, but he still loved his homeland and its people, if not the regime running it. Then in 1963, after an altercation at a nightclub, to the shock of the nation, he unexpectedly died. Now, it was at this point, North Korea decided to use him, an ethnic North Korean, for propaganda purposes, transferring his legacy to fit the North Korean narrative, defeating American after American on behalf of the Kim regime, even if no one in the country knew what pro wrestling was. Today, he stands as the nation's ultimate anti-imperialist patriot, and okay. just like the Kims, is a revered national hero, heavily featured in North Korean media, propaganda posters, monuments, with people all over the country traveling to pay their respects. Which is why 30 odd years after his death, it was a monumental occasion when Ricky Dozan's protege, Antonio Inoki, on behalf of his mentor, returned to the homeland to once again conquer Father and defeat an imperialist American scoundrel. As Flair made his way to the ring, looking as American as can be, with his blonde hair, blue eyes, oh, and star-studded robe, he was nervous. The crowd was treating him with a sense of quiet disdain. Yeah. But then it was time for Inoki's entrance. He came out. And for the first time, the crowd came Cheered. alive. It didn't matter that he was Japanese, because he was representing the great Riki Dozan. As the match started, it became very clear that this wasn't America versus oh Japan. Oh my god, this was this America versus... was America versus North <gasps> No Korea. way! The they destroyed Rick Korea, there! Really responding to Anoki. Dude, the people that truly is... loved Anoki, chanting his name and hanging on his every move. Flair too played his part well with his classic cowardly antics. And after about 15 minutes of back and forth action, Anoki nailed a cartwheel kick, a devastating top rope knee drop, and finally, his signature and Zaguri kick. And it was over. The hero had triumphed. Fans stood up and applauded as North Korea once again prevailed. What? The main event was a success. No way. Kim was happy, and with the entire event in Pyongyang having a legitimate record breaking attendance, far greater than any WrestleMania wow. to date, this was proclaimed undoubtedly the greatest pro wrestling event in history. Goodbye, good it? night. That oh was the North Korean narrative. But outside of the Hermit Kingdom, the event actually failed to garner any real publicity. No one knew about it, and the few who did reported it as some strange attempt to win world respect, reinforcing international opinion that North Korea was kind of weird. Kim Jong-il did not get the respect he was seeking, but it wasn't just him. After returning to Japan, Antonio Inoki discovered that the event offered little to no political rub amidst this controversy. Shiz and a few months later, he lost his re-election bid to Japan's House of Counselors. For Eric Bischoff, he decided to air the controversial event on pay-per-view, marketing it as Collision in Korea, which hopefully was the big push he needed to once and for all topple the WWF. Ah, did he really? But it tanked. The ratings were low and no one cared. There wasn't even any blowback for their time in Korea. Years later, WCW was purchased by the WWF, by this point, the WWE, and the event soon faded into obscurity. Oh now, God. interestingly, this wasn't actually the last oh time a God. major US wrestling company would go on to hold a prominent event in a controversial totalitarian really? state. Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, 2018. 23 wait, years after North Korea. The WWE but wait, what? It's not the same? Riyadh and North Korea are not the same? Now, unrivaled as the world's largest wrestling promotion held an event in the kingdom's yeah, crown capital. Jewel. This amidst controversy the involving thing. the journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who after being surveilled for weeks by Saudi officials, was executed in the Saudi consulate in Turkey. Jeez. According to many sources, the order came from the crown prince himself, although Saudi Arabia denies Demi this. The show went on oh despite no. criticisms from prominent politicians, the media, political commentators, and even WWE's top stars, like Daniel Bryan and John Cena, who refused to work the event. All this quite unlike North Korea, where no one cared. However, 
just like North Korea, the Saudi show inextricably featured a wrestler turned politician who, like Anoki, just so happened to compete in the night's main event. An uncanny coincidence. This man, the aforementioned mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, came. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, while North Korea was spying on wrestlers, Saudi Arabia was spying on journalists, tapping their phones and hacking their mm. accounts, which makes it all the more fitting that the only reason they were caught and exposed was because Turkey was spying on them. And oh really, my it's not just God, government guys, or guys, or guys, 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 guys. This is 2018 we are talking about, okay? This is not Cold War shit. This is 2018. Most people today are too laxed when it comes to online security, using the same password for every account they have. Now, if Bro. this is you, congratulations. You've just witnessed my most convoluted seg, but that's okay because Dashlane makes keeping track of all your passwords nice one. ridiculous. <laughs> I knew it's an ad. It stores all your passwords in one super secure place and autofills them on websites you go to. If you have the same password everywhere, but are too lazy to go to each individual website to change your passwords, well, not a problem because you can just click one button on the Dashlane app and it does it for you. But Kento Bento, what if Dashlane gets hacked? It's a very common question I get. Well, think of your Dashlane account like a security deposit box. If someone were to break into a vault, they would need the keys to every single security deposit box in order to decrypt your password. Good luck with and that. they would have to do it on a user by user basis, which means storing mm, your passwords this way forever. is of course significantly safer than using one password or, or variations on one password everywhere because that can be cracked easily by hackers. Note that Dashlane also has many other features like giving you access to a password generator so you don't have to spend time thinking up super strong passwords like this one. By going to dashlane.com slash kentobento, you can get started for free. And if you want some extra special features like syncing your passwords and login details between all your devices like iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, you can upgrade for 10% off, but only if you're one of the first 200 people to use the promo code kentobento at checkout. Thanks for watching. All right, that was such a great video. I am liking this video. This was amazingly done, like on point, the, all the drawings and everything. It kept me on suspense. This video was amazing. I love these type of videos. Thanks so much for sharing. People literally dying due to starvation and disease host biggest wrestling show. Like this reminds me of Hunger Games, but this happened IRL. I feel like somebody heard about this and then wrote the book. <laughs> You know, like write such uh, such books. I say no, brother. Hulk Hogan, 1994. <laughs> so Scott Norton's wife's jealousy almost got him killed. Dude, like inform yourself, woman. Like see where he's going. Be worried about his life. Don't accuse him of shiz. <laughs> North Korea exists, Kento Bento. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> oh my god kento bento japan america north korea's biggest enemy south korea am i a joke to you <laughs> yeah but like it's different with south korea and north korea you guys like it's definitely different i was watching some documentaries of youtubers going there and ending up in prison because they took uh, took one of the posters with them back home or something like that and that is a big no-no. You cannot do any of this. It was very difficult. It took him like, I think, a year to go back to America. And like everybody had to get involved, you know, government, politicians, embassies. And I don't know if he got mistreated there in the prison, but I guess it's not fun at all. But that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to be checking his channel more and see if there is other uh, WWE news and stuff that I would be interested to react to i uh, have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow with a brand new video bye allergies oh,